If you watched my recent video blogs uh, and or you follow my Facebook updates, you probably know that in the last two months or so my house has been taken over by a team of constructors that have been working on several remodeling projects, some smaller ones and a big large one, which also is the one that is the most important to me, which is the construction of my gamer cave. We had a basement that, like many other basements, was a mix between a swamp and a black hole and a big blob from sci-fi. We, we didn't even go down there anymore, we are just throwing stuff on the stairs and the stuff was swallowed up by the junk that was already there and lost its identity. We called cleaners, ghostbusters, exorcists, we managed to clean that up, so we had a clean slate and we turned that space into a gamer cave. I had this clean canvas that I could organize pretty much the way I wanted, as long as part of the basement was still devoted to general storage, I had huge uh, freedom to build my gamer cave to my specifications, to make it a temple of self-indulgence. Gamer cave is such um, an ultimate achievement, like a utopia for many gamers. You know, so gamers, people in our culture, they can host their rituals down there, they can elect their tribe leaders, all of the weird things that we do as gamers, as part of the game culture. On top, of course, of having a place where uh, I can store all of my games without having to bump into them, to them every time that I move around in the main section of the house. So, I'm happy because I get my gamer cave. My wife is happy because she's not afraid of piles of games that are falling over her head uh, everywhere she turns in the house. So, everybody wins. After quite a bit of work from the constructors first and then I had to work on setting everything up, moving the games, organizing them, adding the final touches. After all of this work, finally the Gamer Cave is complete and is operational. I tested it already by playing some games in there, having friends over to play games with me. Fully tested, it's official, the Gamer Cave is there. And as I had promised in some of my previous videos and in some Facebook updates, I'm going to give you a tour of the cave. I know some of you are curious to see my gamer cave, so here we go. Are you ready to take a look at the gamer cave? Are you brave enough to venture down there? It's like a dungeon crawl uh, without monsters, so actually I don't know that it takes so much bravery. Still, next up we are going to have a look at the gamer cave. Come, follow. Let's see what, what's done there. Behind that apparently harmless door is the entrance to the cave. Are you brave enough to follow me down there? Well, we'll see. It depends. Okay. Here we go down. Here um, are the stairs to go down the cave. Very important. Here we have actually a lateral door, uh, it, get, it faces a little alley here. It is pretty good because if I have game events at night then I can have friends enter straight here from the lateral door and go straight into the cave without going through the main door of the house, which is right there. And since my wife and my little angels sleep right up here, it's better if you avoid having noise in this area so we do not have to interrupt the game night early because maybe I had to go and help my wife put the little angels back to sleep. So, lateral door to go down into the cave. Okay, let's descend. Now, the cave is not just a gamer cave. In reality, I also use it to store part of my books and comic book collection. This bookcase that you see here is two IKEA bookcases. Eh, they hold part of my art book collection, some prose and essays, and some comics, independent comics, European comics, some Italian comics, etc. On this other side of the cave, well, you have a little closet for storage. This area also 
is for storage. Here there is a TV with two chairs and an Xbox 360. My uh, daughter Amelia and I use it to play video games, usually during the weekend when the two-year-old daughter is taking a nap. And here we have our unremarkable collection of video games. But we're not big video gamers in this family, we're mainly board gamers. Uh, let me show you what I mean by that. Here you see there is this big shelf here that uh, is anchored to the posts that hold the ceiling of the basement together. So this is a very important uh, element of the structure. Yes, yeah, so it would be cooler if it wasn't here, it would open up the space, but at the same time, then I would probably build a shelf here anyways to use the space as best as I can. So the good thing is that this posts are already here, so I could anchor uh, this large shelf here. I want the shelf to be pretty deep, uh, and to come out in this direction, so that this area, which is the area that I use the most uh, for social reasons, has more space to walk back and forth, and I have storage space that goes out in this direction. I also want it to be pretty uh, thick, or pretty deep, because I want it to be able to store games on one side, and still have some room on this other side to store my uh, collection of Japanese and uh, Korean comics. Since these usually come in pretty small booklets, as you can see, there is enough space to put them on the other side of the line of games. It's just trying to utilize the space as much as I can to be able to store a lot of stuff. Nothing goes on the ground, so actually, because I don't want to put games or books down there, so uh, I have that area there, which is open space for storage of things from the house, summer clothes or winter clothes, depending, inside plastic boxes. This that you see here is a very important element in the gamer cave. It is an empty bookshelf. Why is it so important? Because for once in my life, I'm not, uh, I don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, another game, where am I gonna put this game? I need to move 20 other things to create the space for the new thing. No, and this a new accommodation in my basement, I have a lot of stuff for new stuff to come, for new expansions. The expansions that will form the expansion of my collection. In there, nothing important, just the machinery that pumps heat into the house. You can probably hear some white noise in the background, and that is indeed the uh, the heating system of the house, and that's okay. When you sit in here it re and you're playing, doing your stuff, it really it's not bothersome, it's easy to forget. Now we get to the main part of the cave. Here we go. Now on this side we have the other side of the shelf that I mentioned earlier, where I have Euro games, adventure games, fantasy games, horror games. The red thread here is games that have a square box or a deep box or a large box. Simply put, those shelves are fairly deep, but if I can avoid it, I want to put games there that have at least one quote-unquote thin side so by putting those games standing there there's still a distance between the games and the wall behind games with square boxes or with large boxes you can't really do that if i put them there they will still be pretty close to the wall now the walls are pretty well insulated i'm not too afraid about uh, uh, humidity but why risk it it is better if the games are not too close to the wall games on this wall on this shelf here would be close to the wall on those shelves else here as you can see they have a lot of empty space so here we have some euro games and games with large boxes this is this is the area for the games with very large boxes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. horror and Lovecraftian games sci-fi games zombie games and things monster based things of that type fantasy stuff and more fantasy and then those boxes down there that 
collect smaller games that go in Ziploc bags, like decision games, Dark City games, small um, uh, Lost World adventures, uh, uh, print and play games, uh, that kind of stuff. Very important, here we have the table. The table is pretty large and now it's, it is in its largest configuration. It can get pretty smaller. I mean, it can just get half of the size that you see here. I can close it or open it as needed. I got a bunch of chairs around there. I usually like to keep it on the, uh, on the, in the open configuration. Just because, just because. I, I, it's not like I have big parties here. If I do, then I can close it and make it smaller. I like the fact that I can set up multiple games here. And if need be, I also have other ways of setting up multiple games. I have other foldable tables that I can take out. I still have magnetic boards that I can use with magnetic counter holders. So I'm not too worried about uh, table space. I think I'll be able to play most things that I want to play with this table. Okay, I placed the camera on the table, so then I can just move it around and turn it around and show you. This is an area with miscellaneous, uh, miscellaneous stuff. From yogurt cups that I use as randomizers, terrain for miniature gaming, Ziploc bags for components, Dice Towers, I showed you those Dice Towers in a recent video. And then two shelves for um, war game magazines and the games that come with them. If you're curious, up there, as you can see this area, this is the pipe that blows the air that goes from the basement into the house. This is hot air and I can close or open this vent so I can regulate the amount of hot air that comes or does not come in here. Now it's a little chilly outside so I'm gonna open that and get some air in here. Moving along here, so as I said here we have the war game magazines. Here we have some other war games. Some games of the Smithsonian uh, series, which I acquired recently and I haven't played yet. I'm pretty interested in doing so. Those, these plastic boxes are, well, some just for various types of components that one may need from dice and little cubes. Downers and meeples and glass beads, you know, stuff that you never know when you're gonna need. When you're playing games, you never know when you're gonna need a little Cthulhu or not, so you better have some handy. More cubes, coins, mm, plastic meeples from Lords of Waterdeep, a game that I do not own, but I have the meeples for it. And here we have these little plastic shells where I store, similar to the boxes they showed you earlier, postcard games, games that come, that do not come in bags, uh, sorry, that do not come in uh, boxes, or very small games that come in boxes. So instead of having piles everywhere that probably would just fall over I prefer to store things in these little containers here. Like here, I have Dice Master. Masters. And now, where probably you want to go, what you want to see? The wall where I have the war games. Or most of them, at least. Let's take a general view. Yep, that is the wall of War Games. Miscellaneous games up there. DVG games. V 
vintage games and those vintage games betray my interest in air games as you can see B17 is right there game I acquired recently then as we go down there are two shells or two levels of the shells devoted to GMT games I have a lot of those um, GMT clearly is a publisher that I like very much I enjoy their games very much or probably they wouldn't be so represented on these shelves they are roughly ordered by chronological order of the themes represented they see World War One, World War Two, a lot of those pa after World War Two. okay this is not chronological here we have the <laughs> comments and colors again recent TV political events but then here going back in time we had the American Civil War, the Napoleonic Wars American War of Independence, uh, 17th century, ancient stuff, and then some miscellaneous stuff. Some miscellaneous stuff down there too. Uh, well, this shall not so miscellaneous, because that's a lot of games, block games by Columbia Games. Old Avalon Hill games. And then at the bottom down there, but there's no negative judgment implied. A lot of miscellaneous stuff from various publishers, usually uh, smaller publishers or publishers that have been out of business for a while. Or simply games that I couldn't really, I don't know, fit into other areas. Uh, I see there still are some word games there. Black Rose Blue Sky. Some games that I still have to play, like Napoleon Against Europe, Galaxy Defenders, uh, things like that. Tide of Iron, The New Wave, uh, Kiwami, Steppy, Creamy, ooh. Now, my Spanish is a little rusty, but I do think that that means bloody uh, Steps of Crimea. I really look forward to playing that game, because there aren't enough games, in my opinion, about the Crimean War, and that is one of the few. Oh, my collection of attack wing stuff. And then Euro Gamey game, uh, fillers, uh, small games, economic games, uh, with some exception, like Thunder Alley is not exactly in that category. Thunder Alley and Rallyman, so racing games are there. A shelf of small games by the three point games, or part of the shelf, and then other games that have been chosen to go on this shelf just like the word those were games against that shelf again because either they had small boxes or if they were placed on the shelf standing they were not too close to the wall and here as you can see there is a lot of open space of the top of that shelf that entire shelf that is all area that I can and I'm planning to use for future games. So one thing that I really like is not just how, how much spice, space I have now and how my games fit well in the game, but also how much room for further acquisitions I have. It gives me quite some peace of mind. Another important element in giving me peace of mind is this beauty here which is the dehumidifier. When I announced that I was making a gamer cave in the basement, many people were worried, oh my gosh, your games are gonna be all moldy. Um, before I started the gamer cave, I used this basement here to store books and comic books for almost three years, and none got damaged. Now I have improved the waterproofing of the walls, and I have a dehumidifier. I can't imagine that things would be worse than they were when I hadn't taken any of these measures. As of now, we have a temperature of 63, humidity of 36. We are pretty good. I feel that the games should be pretty safe. What are those things up there, you may wonder? Uh, well, a green mat to be used as terrain in war game miniatures, and then large uh, game mats that can be used for cards, for card games, and things like that. They come from... Uh, uh, my friendly game store that has donated them to me. They got them in like tournaments for tournaments of Magic, Magic the Gathering, I believe, which is a game I do not play. And they were just gathering dust there. So, well, no, they are not gathering dust there anymore. They are here where they are not going to gather dust, but they are going to be used when I'm going to play card games. 
And in case you were wondering about those play mats that I was mentioning, here is one. Here you see the detail moving backwards. You get a sense of how large this is and also of how incredibly and perfectly well this game mat covers the size of my game table. It's like it was designed for it. It looks pretty, uh, it looks cool, it is also going to be very useful because when playing games this will prevent cards from sliding around the table. But really, it is just darn cool, that's, that's what matters, let's face it. And here's another one of the mats, this one with the blind justice on it. And here you have the last of the three mats. Again, it covers the table perfectly and it clearly represents a fantasy-oriented allegorical representation of wisdom of the goddess Athena as clearly identifiable from the owl, which is traditionally her symbol, her symbolic animal. Thank you, Athena. Please lend me your wisdom when I am playing games and trying to devise the wisest strategies. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, I hope that you enjoyed this little video tour. But remember, we're not talking about uh, uh, a virtual space here. This is an actual space physically located in beautiful Bloomington, Indiana. So if you live here already or if you're passing through town, drop me a line, contact me at my YouTube account or Facebook or Board Game Geek account. And if I'm in town and I'm available, I'll be more than glad to give you a full tour and to play a game with you. Uh, from time to time viewers of my videos do contact me and if they are in town we do get together to play games. Now I can actually invite you to the Gamer Cave. So let me know. I'm always happy to meet new gamers, to meet with the viewers of my videos, maybe around Gen Con when you're in Indiana. Anyways, let me know. What I can tell you for now is that the Gamer Cave is operative, you will see more of it in the future because I will film many of my videos uh, from there. For now, this is all, I hope you enjoyed this video, keep uh, playing, keep gaming, and if you have a Gamer Cave or you're building one, let me know, I'm always curious to know about uh, how other players have dealt with the problem or the issue, or I should say, the fun, exciting challenge that building a Gamer Cave is. Ciao for today.